Hello, and welcome to the week one recap for Rel Division 5... No, it's not 5 anymore. 9B and 9C. We kind of evolved. Well, you know, I mean the divisions, like we've got demoted to mm. 9E, uh, 9B and 9C. Yeah, so uh, I'm Kiss Palu, and that is Gengar. We are nosedive-less this week. Uh, before I Get look... Used. Get used to it, by the way, people. Nosedive tends to be um, sporadic with his appearances. I mean, he's he is going through college right now, so he has a pretty good excuse. Um, okay, before we look at the schedule, I want to make one quick note. You will notice that there are only 12 out of 14 registered teams in this division. One of those, is, that means there are two admin games each week. Uh, so, one of the coaches who previously accepted their ticket had to drop it at the last moment. So then my question is, if I were a new coach, what do I do when I don't have an opponent this week? Uh, that is a very good question. Uh, if you do not have an opponent, then what you need to do is basically nothing. Uh, don't play against the computer. Do not play against the computer. <laughs> and uh, when, the re when the times for the... When it comes time for the week to roll around, you will be awarded by an admin, an admin win, where you'll get two MVPs and a touchdown uh, assigned, to, assigned to random players. Yes. Uh, on the Discord, you will find a bi-week dice hall. And in the bi-week dice hall, very presumably, your game will be rolled by an admin and then an admin will pretty much do everything for you mm -hmm. you just have to wait until the end of the week and then you will see the results although worth saying last week we mentioned uh about not repeating the same player name this is exactly the sort of situation we were talking about where you might not get as favorable results as you would prefer because of because the admins literally won't be able to tell which player is which yeah, um, if the MVP falls on a player named, you know, Dolph, mm -hmm. instead of Dolph 1 or Dolph 2, if it just falls on a player named Dolph, then that MVP probably won't be used. And out of fair play, I think it just will be, you know, seen as like um, a forfeit SPP. I'm actually not sure exactly what they do in that situation. I just know that they won't be a able to abide by the uh, whatever the die roll says. If you have any questions about this in particular, then PM those dive on Discord. He's an admin and he has more information about this certain matter. Also, uh, there's another admin you can contact as well. Uh, who was it again? Uh, wait. I have uh, to check the bolt. Uh, I want to say and I want to say NPA, but that might be a dirt. I might be thinking of NPA is Division Two. Uh, okay, so not NPA then. <laughs> Wait, no. It is NBA. NBA oh. does RL, uh, RDL 1, RDL 2, and 9B. Seems sort of odd, but okay. So, so Ninja Pirate Assassin on Discord is your uh, division's um, mm. admin. So, uh, and you will get all the information. Yeah, so uh, there you go. If you are playing a team where every player in your name, is, uh, every player on it is named Dorf, pester Ninja Pirate Assassin about it. Uh, except, I will say, don't actually I do that. Say, <laughs> I will say one thing, though. Like, in this cult, this guy is called Ninja Pirate Assassin. Mm -hmm. In Blood Bowl, this guy is called Ninja Pirate Robo. And I believe in um, the Reddit, he's called Ninja Pirate Robo Assassin. Well, he's definitely a Ninja Pirate anyway. Uh, but uh, let's look at the... Uh, anyway, now that that's out of the way, let's look at the games from last week. First, we have the Gobstoppers, who got their admin game. Uh, not really a whole lot to say about that one. Uh, they did get a level up, but they haven't taken it yet. So, yeah. Uh, next a up... A goblin team having a level up. Do you even want this? That's the question. Depends if it's a double. Uh, <laughs> next up is the Pananimals versus the Tena... The Tenerak Tyrants, which was won by the uh, 
I almost said vampire. No, this is a dark elf. Was won by the dark elf team one to zero. MVP goes to a dark elf blitzer. I shit you not. Mm -hmm. And a hobgoblin. Well, one of these is a very good MVP. Well, I mean, an 8348 is basically a high elf catcher with an armor value. Mm -hmm. So this guy is going to go places. Uh... Also, very curious is that Trolf did give like 51 blocks. I mean, there might have been a lot of pushes. But seeing how there are five injuries, I think this was like a very bash heavy game. Uh, well, the Pananimals only have 28 successful blocks, so it seems to me that the Chorus did a lot of bashing, but they weren't able to do much ball in the way of ball handling. Uh, they do have two Miss Next games on their team, though, so they did do some damage. Mm -hmm. So it would seem. Uh, well, on to the next one. And that would be, uh, speaking of dwarves, the Rage Dwarf. Versus Mean Green Boys, where the dwarfs won one to zero uh, against. This no, is this is an orc game team, but it threw me off for a second because it's a goblin who got the MVP. Yeah, but this is your typical orcs versus mm. dwarf, and in the beginning, the orcs always have the slight edge, but the dwarfs can just like you know mm -hmm. one dice everything because of block and tackle. This game is, I think, a joy to see because it's 72 blocks for the dwarfs and 68 for yep. the orcs. Holy hell. That is an absolute bash fest. And there was a murder as well. It, I checked. It was a long beard. Uh, so not the worst thing to lose, <laughs> but... Uh... Okay, so that's, that's one dwarf <laughs> of the list already. Yep. Not the worst thing to lose, especially for this team, perhaps. But at the same time, you're maybe not going to be super happy about having immediately lost a long beard. Thing is, though, he has 11 dwarfs still. Did he buy a new dwarf? Uh, he might have had 12 to start with. I don't know. Check, okay. if one of, check if one of his long beards has a different name. Then it's definitely a new dwarf. Nope. And all of them have three matches, so, you know. Okay. There you go, then. Uh, but yeah, like, this looks like it was a real bash fest, but a fairly typical one. So, uh, I don't think there's really much more to say on it. Uh, that brings us to a match that is really a shame we are missing a certain someone, because there is, are things to talk about in this match. It's the Lonely Shiners versus Click Click Splat. And the Kislev team won against the Lizards. No, so I was thinking that he was going to really lose every match he is going to do. What mm -hmm. does he get? He gets a card catcher. That's like the dream. Okay, this guy is niggled. It's not ideal. But while he is alive, this is going to be one of the most annoying pieces out there. So Because being just able to mm -hmm. pounce in there with a 2 plus and then give card to everything you want to hit is massive. Yeah. Uh, here's the thing with that. Though, Nose Dice took three casualties in this game, and all of them were permanent injuries. Uh, there was the Niggle on that catcher who rolled doubles into guard that we talked about. He also took a minus movement on a lineman, which is not the end of the world. It's just a lineman. And he took minus movement on a blitzer. This is the thing with Kislev, though. Mm -hmm. You keep pieces, and you just buy your positionals you need at first and then the moment you have all positionals then you can actually start of thinking mm -hmm. of like you know um, replacing people because this is a team which needs you know time Kislev team needs to first get their two extra blitzes then need to get a bear then need to start leveling all those guys so you know by the time mm -hmm. he's like his two other blitzes and his bear then he might actually be like huh okay maybe I could like fire this guy and get a new one Mm -hmm. For now, it's just up to him to just, like, you know, not give SPP to that mm -hmm. guy and just give more SPP to the other Blitzer and just use Andy as a punching bag slash, you know, mm -hmm. hawk threat or something. Yep, but uh, still, that he won this game at all, this was probably... This was his first game, but it was probably one of the harder matches for him in this division because it's Lizards. Uh, there's not really that too, too much Kislev can do against Lizards except just dodge around them. But, uh... Elf screen base, basically. 
But uh, I dare say he pulled off a bit of a nose dice. Um, <laughs> he got three passes off successfully, and his his he KO'd three lizards, and the lizards KO'd two more of themselves. <laughs> That's how you do it. Although, to be fair, it looks like Nose Dice himself also sustained a couple of injuries from, uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say probably failed leaps. It's, well, I mean, that's why you roll for rerolls. Mm hmm. Okay. Uh, moving on some more. Our Hold next on. game is Late to the Party versus Click, Count Click Splats of uh, Corrigan, and meanwhile, does have two blocks now, which is, you know, nice. Oh, yeah. That is the thing. They did get a level up, but it wasn't in anything interesting, so I didn't write it down. <laughs> right. Late so, to the party. So, late, late to, to the... the party is, in fact, the team that dropped. So, going forward... <laughs> no, no, no. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> late to the party is late to the party. Now is not allowed to play anymore. I mean, in fairness, it's not that he was late so much as he left early. Very early. <laughs> Play to the party, so I just decided to fuck off. That was my one. Uh, yeah. So, uh, going forward, if your match gains late to the party, that is you is the a concede game until that spot is filled. Uh, so bounce castle enthusiast got a concede win here. The stuff we said earlier all applies, and uh, they didn't get any level ups that I saw from this match. They have a ban now, though. Oh, okay. I guess they bought a uh, bear then. I didn't notice that. Um, <laughs> they bought they bought Fluffy. Well, okay then. That is something interesting. I'm glad you caught it. Uh, next up is the Rotterhood versus the Hossdorf's Home Wreckers. And Nurgle beat Chaos Dwarfs. I think... Even though Nurgle is one of the like harder teams to start off with because they don't have much in like you know things to go with, going versus Charles is actually a really favorable matchup because of the strength advantage you have. Hmm. So if you play a very control game, and I think he did because he had more blocks mm -hmm. than off at uh, Charles, I think he you know will be fine, and he sort of you know did it. Less armor breaks because the Charles have more armor. But mm. they, you know, just grinded the game towards the one zero. Yeah. On the other hand, like you do have a, have the a small strength advantage, but it's just so much easier for the dwarfs to do things without having to worry about the dreaded one and nine. So I, I think. Guess... So I think it's more <laughs> even than it might seem. In, in one either thing direction. That there's one thing the Chorf does have, but the uh, Nurgle does not have. The Nurgle has the victory, the Chorf has the good MVP. Actually, there is one other thing that the Nurgle have, and that is a move busted Pestigore, who they promptly fired. Let's keep it. Let's kill it. I mean, you could, maybe you would have, but Galactic did not. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, it's just his choice. Mm -hmm. Uh, and actually, look at these these stats. I think it was probably very close to a draw game. Uh, the dwarves do have sixty running yards, so they probably lost possession of the ball shortly before scoring a touchdown. The wait, this is the wrong twelve team. We have two twelves. We do. You um... know, this is the this is the twelve team with the two guards. So yeah. His strength advantage actually was a little bit mm -hmm. less so uh, interesting. Oh well. Okay. And that brings us to the uh, final match of the week. The only one that wasn't 1-0. The Elements of Style versus the Werewolf on Wall Street. Where I am happy to report the Wood Elves... I'm happy to say Elves won. There's something wrong with that statement. But I am because they beat we the Werewolves, damn it. <laughs> They might have won, but look at that MVP. It's heartbreaking. Uh, yeah, okay, there is that. But you know what? I think if the last round of the Season 7 playoffs taught me ever anything, it's that you only need one War Dancer. <laughs> it, this is the War Dancer which was often busted. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now it's just finished. 
Yeah, well, now he's permanently movement busted. Yeah, I mean, now you don't have to fire him, so that's already, you know, that worked up. And you don't have to click a button. You might say that uh, he's playing for another team now. Namely this one. The world <laughs> on Wall Street. Ah, uh, good old, good old Necro. Stealing war dances left and right. Mm hmm But all of his sketches are leveled now. One of them has got Also really nice. Mm hmm But, uh, yeah. Lots of... Not too many blocking this game. It looks like it was primarily a agility game. With mostly opportunistic blocks taken from either team. Of course, the, the Necro have more opportunity opportunity blocks. It's but... Necromantic versus mm -hmm. um, Elves. It's going to be a fast game. Yep. However you put it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, uh, oh wow. The elements of style sustained 10 KOs. And I guess the werewolves inflicted 10 KOs. That is, they must have came very close to being pitch cleared. I think they just falled every turn because they have such a huge pinch. Uh, no expulsions though. So uh, maybe that they did. I know, I know. <laughs> uh, well, I think these all these kills are actually. Do kills show up if it's removed from a foul? Because injuries and kills don't. I have no idea. I don't know. It's Blood Bowl Two is really inconsistent about those stats when it comes to surfs and fouls. Uh, Either and... way, Claw was mm. not going to do a lot this match because you can't Claw AV7. True, true, true. Uh, and anyway, uh, yeah, I th and that's the games from the week. So let's look at our teams. Do you have a team picked out? Uh, if not, I do. You start. I don't have an idea yet. Okay, well, uh, I'm going to go with the obvious. Sort of, sort of my... You might say it's my uh, my theme, or perhaps my special interest. It's it's goblins. <laughs> the Gad Stoppers, Goblin Anti Deflammation Society. We never cheat. Raven Pose Nine Forty TV Goblin Team, which you know what has technically won all of its games. Actually, <laughs> that's not true. It. Did not win all of its, uh, all of its Greenhorn games. But you know what? Those ones don't count. <laughs> yeah, I was also on an undefeated streak like a few hours ago. Hmm? <laughs> we'll just see in a few weeks if this still is the case. Yep. So, uh, anyway. Uh, there's... The unfortunate side effect of this early in the league means we don't actually have that much to look at here. This is a pretty basic goblin team. There's one level up on a goblin that hasn't happened yet, so we'll just pretend it doesn't exist. Uh, that's the jo joke, by the way, going forward. I've just explained it for you. Um, and there's one troll of guard, and that's about it. But you know what? Having said all that, this is exactly the sort of goblin team I'd like to see. There's no pogoer. There are 14 players, uh, which is actually the magic number for goblins, is 14. It is. Uh, I just don't have love for the bombardier, personally. Mm -hmm. But you you gotta take the bombardier. Like, first of all, what are you doing playing goblins if you're not taking it? Because it's one of the most fun players in the game. It's not necessarily a good player, but it's one of the most fun players in the game. If he works. But beyond that, just the 1 in 6 chance of getting Hail Mary Pass on the level up, it's just too good to turn down. No. Um, out of experience, I can actually say that accuracy is a lot better than the uh, gimmicky skill, which is Hail Mary Pass. I strongly disagree. Um, and I happen to know that Ravenpo does as well. I can pretty much guarantee you that if he rolls a doubles, he will take Hail Mary Pass. <laughs> I've played Hail Mary Pass, uh, that's, uh, Bomber mm -hmm. now for like five or six games in Clan League. He hasn't hit a single thing in 40 throws. 
Yeah, okay, that's 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 a fair assessment. Uh, I still disagree, but you know what? You have the experience to back up your opinion. Uh, still, overall, I do like how this team looks. It has all three secret weapons, no pogo, like I said. The reason the pogo were, it, not having the pogo is expensive, is because if you had it, you would not have 14 goblins. That Pogoware is literally worth two regular goblins, and you can't throw it, and you don't really get much for it. It has a three plus leap, and it has a, one extra point of movement, and that's it. If you want a Pogoware, just get to start play it. It has dirty play it. Uh, yeah, pretty much. It's not. It's not actually that expensive. Uh, although you cannot use rerolls for it, so you know your mileage may vary. Yeah, but it doesn't get sent off. True enough. <laughs> so that's something. Uh, okay. So, I really want to see where this team develops. Uh, in terms of that development, uh, it looks like one troll is one injury away. That's probably going to level up pretty soon. The Bombardier is at 5 out of 6. So, I mean, let's be real. It's not going to level up unless it gets another MVP. But it might happen. It is in range now. And uh, there's a bunch of goblins who are one or three SVP away from leveling. And uh, the way I would play this, and I don't know that Ravenpoe will do this for sure, but the way I would play this is I'm gonna, I would deliberately try to avoid getting... I would deliberately try to spread out my SVP on my goblins as much as possible. Um, because um, the thing is... You don't want to fire a goblin when it levels up once, but unless that level up is a double, then it's not really very valuable. There aren't really many skills you actually can get on a mm -hmm. goblin which are fail valuable. You can get sneaky git maybe for, you know, filing purposes. It's kind of gimmicky. Just like the Hail Mary Pass, which is kind of gimmicky. I mean, you can mm -hmm. get wrestle, which is okay, but then you need to have that, support. That's tackle, double. Which you'll which you will never get mm. to double. I Jump mean, up. could there, be gimmicky. There are actually There's so many gimmicky skills, but nothing like seriously good. There are actually a lot of really good skills to take on a double, but on normals, you have your options basically boil down to sidestep and diving tackle and catch. My personal preference is for taking sidestep. Honestly, the only persons in the team which you really want to level up, which actually get to a lot better by leveling, are your trolls. And the fanatic. No, the fanatic can get dodge on the normal, and that's it. He also uh, needs No, to actually, but I... the fanatic has strength on normals, not agility. Oh, sorry, I was talking about the loony, excuse mm. me. Oh yeah, no, yeah. the loony is definitely in the category where the level up isn't very useful unless it's a double. But no, the fanatic gets way better if it levels up. Fanatic, if it gets Mighty Blow and then Grab, is actually really mm -hmm. awesome. And if it then gets like Movement Up and Movement Up, then beware. That's actually a really good player. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, on a, always take plus movement on the Fanatic. And if you roll doubles, take either Block or Sure Feet. Honestly, I like Block. Because I have a Block Fanatic. And while he doesn't hurt mm -hmm. as much as a Mighty Blow one which I sort of wished I actually would have taken for, you know, development. He is very reliable. Mm -hmm. Like, I've never had such a reliable fanatic. Like, holy hell, you can just put him on the line and he'll just stay there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, I tend to prefer more re reliable picks myself, but if you want to go full goblin, I think sides... I think, uh, not sidestep, rather. I think sure feed is the correct choice. Um, I mean, no, you're taking mighty blow on the fanatic regardless. <laughs> Yeah, mighty blow and grab. Those are the first two skills mm -hmm. you really need. Because grab is super useful. Because of course the problem with the fanatic is that it can't actually use a lot of the strength skills. Um... Guard, mighty blow, grab. That's it, I guess. Technically, it can use a uh, thick skull. Um... Yeah. <laughs> Technically. <Stand> firm. <laughs> I don't think it'll do you much good, but it can use it. Oh yeah, stand firm is a thing. But uh, no multi-block and no... Break tackle? Break tackle, yeah. And uh, actually, there's nope. a lot of skills it can't use. 
No piling on? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you could take piling on, but you really probably shouldn't. <laughs> I pile on and now I die as well. Uh, that's sort of how that goes. Yeah. Or, actually, no, you won't die, you'll just get ejected. I don't... Anyway, let's go to another mm-hmm. team because otherwise people are just going to think that this is the Goblin Channel. I mean... No comment. Uh, what's your team? <laughs> you wouldn't mind that, would you? I, I am I... going to go for <laughs> Werewolf of Wall Street. Okay. Sounds like a good pick to me. Coached by Cunning Fox Pop. Uh, so we have Bitey Max Tab and Slash. Runny Cut and Murder. Well, Cut Murder. Standing Not Moving Much. Brick Mall Back in the Way. Very obvious names of what they do. Myrtle Tackle Good. That guy makes you dead. Yeah, I like these names. I just don't know why there is a zombie called Helium, but now I do. It's from a stay as a steam. It is. Formerly so, yeah. a slightly war slow war dancer. Now a slightly slower war dancer. I mean, just look at the <laughs> model and just look at his eyes like he has seen some shit. You know what, though? He did learn how to put on clothing. Yeah, yeah more has a little bit more armor. <laughs> He's not planning to die again. So, this is your very standard necromantic team. I do like, even though it's very bloody early on, but I really do like that he has so many zombies mm-hmm. and a bench of, you know, 13. Mm-hmm. Because now we're going to see the rest of the teams just get stomped and stomped and stomped on this mm-hmm. is the fun thing about the necromantic team. If you stomp and remove people, you get to build people for your bench. Mm-hmm. It's I do... just saving you mm-hmm. more money. I do feel like it might be a little bit early to have a second ghoul. Uh, if this is another zombie instead, your TV, the TV would be a little bit more manageable. But uh, having said that, since you have it, you may as well use it, right? Yeah, in this case, it would cut you 30 and 50. Mm-hmm. It would cut you 80k, which is huge in like a starting division. Mm-hmm. I think this is also why that like in another group, I don't know what one I've seen a same sort of thing. But... Uh, um, just with like zombies instead of ghouls mm-hmm. and I think ghouls instead of whites They're like a very special sort of uh, setup mm-hmm. I mean like this this is definitely why the, the TV for this team is so high and a little bit bloody is because it has two ghouls uh, but the yeah. development on it seems solid tell of the tale of every necro team of course other werewolves mm-hmm. no he doubles went, yet he went for blotch now this is the thing though like everybody with the werewolves and i understand why because they score much more and blotch is such a good skill combination because you want to have it but if you really really want to go the murder route block tackle is actually mm-hmm. also not a bad thing to go to plus i mean the... it depends from mm-hmm. coast to coach obviously but still plus the other thing is everyone is going to want to kill your werewolves anyway uh, which which might have you going, oh, well, then it should take dodge so that they're less killable. But no, it means that the peop- the players blocking the most will have tackle. Yep. And also makes it actually u- more useful as a second. Mm-hmm. Because the rebels usually are either in the end of the enemy's mm-hmm. field scoring touchdowns or at the back being preserved mm-hmm. and left out in the open. Although, to be fair, uh, dodge can help you get yourself out of trouble after you've frenzied your way into it. In the team reroll, and if you have three of them, then you should kind of preserve them for the werewolves to begin with. Yeah, true enough. Uh, so, anything I mean, else to add? I think I'm even crazy enough to actually make a case of early pro. Mm, I guess the question is how early? <laughs> Uh, well, with vampires, you usually, if you want to do this gimmicky team, it's a gimmicky team still. Mm-hmm. You can go for a skill and then block and then all the skills you want. With werewolves, you basically also could do the same thing, but you like starting with block. So you have that security of not dying so much mm-hmm. and have pro for all of your crazy actions you want to do, like re-rolling bashes, re-rolling dodges, re-rolling pickups, all without wasting a single reroll. And... Still, while being able to farm for your mighty blow. Because if he's a killer, he's going to need a pro mm-hmm. anyway. 
I guess that's true. It's something to consider, at the very least. Actually, yeah, like, that would be a, an interesting thing to try out, probably. I don't know that it's the best, but, eh. It's fun. It's not mm -hmm. the best, but I can tell you it's fun. Plus, it's a very, it's a very clutch mm -hmm. kill. Plus, if it doesn't work out, then you will certainly get the chance to rebuild. Indeed. Um, okay, uh, anything else to add? Uh, no, let's get an expedition. Okay, uh, let's just look over a couple of games from week two first. Uh, I am going to look at, uh, well, the team I just looked at. So, the Gadstoppers versus the Pananimals. Which is, of course, Goblins versus Dark Elves. I really want to see Ravenpo do well here. Uh, I'm not sure that he'll win this necessarily. <laughs> but there's a lot of potential to murder Dark Elves playing as Goblins. Uh, there is no tackle yet, so yeah, the only thing that the Dark Elves do have is that Agility 5 block Blitzer and the Blitzer. So, you know, the Blitzers of the Dark Elves are going to have mm -hmm. a field day, rest of the team not so much. Mm -hmm. If your opponent doesn't have block, then block is just as good as tackle against guard. Or against uh, dodge. The only issue in this uh, game is, I think... Um, for Fox's sake, he's going to need some protection because I think he is going to be targeted. Uh, yeah, I could definitely see that. Goblins are definitely going to want to kill. I mean, they're just definitely going to want to kill. That's a complete statement. But especially something with any sort of stat freak. Yeah, but you know, one mm -hmm. is easier to kill than the other. Yep, very true. Uh, what game do you want to look at? Let's see what we have here. Mm. I think I want to see the Bounce Castle Enthusiasts versus the Rotherhood. Uh, yeah, that could be a fun game. It's a Kislev team with a bear, mm -hmm. with a little bit more TV, versus a Nurgle team with one goat with agility up, and the full Chaos Warrior and Beast of Nurgle line. Mm -hmm. Just, so this could be a really fun match. There's a lot of things both of these teams can do to muck with the going-ons of the other. And uh, that could make for a really interesting game to watch. This is why I'm you know, curious how this game mm -hmm. goes. The only thing that we do have here, though, is no bench on the Kislev side, and that's my thing. Yeah, I was gonna say, based on the result from the previous week, I would have to give a small advantage to the Nurgle. I mean, they also start with no bench, but when they kill something, they get it on their bench after the game. That is true. Doesn't help them in-game, though. Not like Lynn Necro, no. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, then on that note, let's let's uh, hurry up and go look at the other division. I, I, well, I say that we're about on time. <laughs> Maybe a couple minutes slow, but nothing to sweat about. Uh, anyway, uh, first game is Fat Bye Week, which is a bye week that goes for the mammals of unusual size. Uh, the other bye week I'll just point out right now is except Gerber admin squad. So the cat. The Economy of Scale got that by week. Uh, and I haven't looked at level ups for either of these teams, so maybe they got something interesting, or maybe they did not. <laughs> okay, so the first game that we actually have is yep. Rocket Stones versus all Orc no play. And the Orcs win 2-0 to zero against the Dark Elves. I mean, play around. Hmm. The Orcs have not much bashing for an Oak team. 35 blocks with 35 blocks. Yeah. Uh, that really isn't a lot. But they got a lot of, of removals. Okay, so... so if I get this right, basically the Dark Elf team got out edgy by Orcs. <laughs> 
Well, to be fair, that's a lot easier to do when you have 50% more players than your opponent. Uh, there's one thing I do see, that's the huge ball percentage of 75%, so I think the Orcs just grabbed the ball and just never gave it up. Yep, like it does. This is my ball now. It does look like that is what happened. Uh, there was one death, it was just an Orc lineman, so nothing that he's gonna... nothing that's gonna be missed. Okay. And, oh, right. This is the one of just all the names are orc, orc, orc. Yeah, but they have <laughs> different apostrophes. Mm -hmm. So it's orc, question mark, question mark, orc, question, question, question mark. So there's difference. Yeah, like a small one, yes. Uh, next game is a draw, 1 1 between the Dorfs of Duncan and the Dauntless Unicorns. This is a surprising one to me because normally I would actually, you know, pick. The pro elves to just win this by storm. Uh, they might have run a foul with the. Well, actually, they don't have that much dodge yet, do they? Hmm. No, uh, it's just pure agility ways. Like they're really fast. Mm hmm. Uh, as was the case in the last one, it's possible that they just got too many players removed and couldn't stop the. Uh, could not stop the cast wars from scoring. All of their players looking really good shape, mm -hmm. but there's only one missing. Uh, yeah, they had a dead lino, so again, not a huge loss. I uh, know. And the dwarves now have their complete lineup of chaos blockers. Mm -hmm. Still missing 20k for next reroll, though. Uh, yep. Gotta be, well. Actually, still, that means they are actually very close to getting that last reroll, which they've got to be excited about. Uh, but just having your full roster, that's that's still basically good. Moving Either on. Way. Our next game is the Crawdad Zydeco Experience, which I feel like should not be a human team, but it is. And they played against Red Runt Rage! Which we did not cover last week, because it is a team that got in, put into this division at the last minute, and it's halflings. I shall do a um, review of that team then after this. Uh, I Tell are, the I already took it actually. <laughs> okay, then you go for it. Yeah. Coach. So we'll be talking about that a little bit later on, but uh, so the halflings did lose this game one to zero, oh, but that's not much. It, that is not a big loss for halflings, and not only that, but they actually kept even with the humans on removals. What? Actually, they in fact they went ahead of the human on removals. What? Well, actually, no, did they? Uh, that's seven. No, no, it, I was right the first time. They went even on removals, but the removals they inflicted hurt way more than the ones they took, because uh, the humans have two dead linemen. Which, once again, Lyman, not the biggest loss, but I think humans care about that a little bit, especially losing two at the same time. And against halflings. This division is a division which is very close to your heart, I think. I love this. <laughs> they did that in very few blocks as well. Uh, 70, or 70, no, 37 for the humans, and only 22 for the halflings. Um... I wish so badly there was oh a God, yeah. throw teammate statistic. Our next match, by the way, I saw the match report of this one. This actually is pretty damn huge. Yeah, actually, I'm excited to talk about that, so let's go look. Uh, Fat Earthers lose versus Mystery Science Goats 3k. So the first thing, which is already very noticeable, mm. is that Ogres with five mighty blows only have four armor breaks. How? Does a chaos team with nada, not Xero, <laughs> have 16 armor breaks and they have four? Uh, well, presumably, negative pro lost. rolled a lot of pals. I, I just would have like thought, like, hmm, things are mm -hmm. going to be even because of the massive mighty blood, but no, instead a bloody ogre died. The goat, yeah, an ogre died. Just straight up died. That probably happened early in the game, I've had to guess. And, uh, Mystery Science Goats 3000 had over twice as many blocks. 
double plus three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Kale's basically fresh Kale's. It's wet. Outpashed <laughs> no good team. Which is, GG. It's not impossible, especially when the ogres have no rerolls. But uh definitely They have two rerolls, not no. Uh, okay, few rerolls. But definitely not something you expect to see to this extent. I mean the only one who felt the wrath of the ogres was drunk slam chest with a minus movement. Hmm. And he doesn't have his because, Actually you know, whatever. Uh oh no, yeah, you're right. Uh there was also one other goat that took a miss next game, but I guess that's not a big deal that big a deal. I mean, losing a Noga mm -hmm. for a Noga team is a lot more of a big deal. Oh yeah, for sure. With his 800 TV, he can now induce a chainsaw every match. Uh, can Ogres induce a chainsaw? Do they have a chainsaw star player? I think they do. I guess they probably have Nabla. That would make Sorry, sense. Similar, yeah. Uh, well, they definitely... You know. I know they definitely have Boomer anyway, so... Uh, anyway... Uh, that just leaves one more match for the division, and that Woods would be... United versus Nerves. And Nerves win 2-1. to one. This time the... This is a Necro team, right? No, it's Undead. It's an Undead team. Much more interesting. And you know what? Reasonable. They also killed a War Dancer. Yep. <laughs> but he puts back at his now a zombie. Yep. Just all these war dancers, they just don't like being elves. They want to be zombies too badly. <laughs> I want to be bald and slow and shambling. I don't want to be fast and pristine and frail. Maybe they just want more protection than a loincloth. It's those shirts, man. <laughs> they sold those shirts and they were I want that. I, that. I just have to assume so, yeah. Uh, looks like the undead have a pass, but the wood elves do not. Uh, a freaking ton of running yards as well. It's high percentage ball possession. So... Yeah, I was rooting mm -hmm. for this coach for the undead. And it seems that I mm -hmm. showed correctly. Yep. This looks like they did a pretty good job of controlling the game. And, like, uh, the wood elf coach, loop 4444. Like, I don't know how... I don't know how experienced he is exactly, but I do know that he, this isn't his first league, so like, he knows what he's doing. Congratulations, Mr. Dick Delaware. Okay then. And, uh, let's, uh, look at some teams now. Well, I'll start with, um, Nerfs, the under team of Dick Delaware. Okay, that sounds like a good plan. I presumably think that the bummy school to kill because he has two SPP. Mm -hmm. The ghoul has the block pickup. This is Scott with all zombies, so they like to foul. Mm -hmm. Thus, they have dirty players. Yep. Which I completely agree. 12 people, mm -hmm. exactly right. 1060k TV. Very low, it's really good. The only thing I don't like here is the fact that, you know, I there are six zombies now. I would have had like one or two skeletons because, you know, having a little bit more movement allowance is hmm. you know optimal well the thing is he's at 12 players so i'm pretty sure what happened is that he took all of zombies for his initial lineup which i think makes sense and the only reason he has an extra zombie is because he killed a wood elf yep uh if he buys another player i would uh, i would expect it to be a skeleton actually can you turn zombies into skeletons after the games no. when you no. no i thought you were supposed to be i guess it's just not a blood bowl 2 thing in Blood Bowl 2, it's just a zombie. Mm. That. Because I'm pretty sure by CRP, you should be able to do that. Yeah. Thing is now, mm. though, um, we have a Blotch Ghoul, which is perfect for a ball carrier. Yep. And the other ghoul, I would just give Bristle the moment he levels up so he can become a ball hawk. I think that is what I would do as well. That sounds like an excellent plan to me. Uh, this team is going to go places. Mm going to have a very good fun season I just hope for him that it's like mummies are able to get like you know cards as soon as possible because mm. when they both have cards it's then that the fun really starts or you know one of them can take blodge and the other one could be strength six or that's the thing though, uh, like, normally yeah, I, that... try to, I try to rush my like touchdowns on my whites rather than my goals mm -hmm. 
and I just get mighty blow, mighty blow, and then yeah. just guard guards. <laughs> it's just I, like I think full that... mighty blow two guards for like one thousand TV. Yes, I, please. I think that makes a lot of sense for the first level or two for the whites. If anytime you can give them a touchdown, you should because well because then they get their skills that matter quicker. And the ghouls are. The ghouls are sort of built to cycle quickly anyway. They don't have regen, and they're the natural scoring threat, so... Yeah. You don't need to worry about feeding them them uh, touchdowns, because they will naturally feed themselves. Exactly. Uh, any last thoughts? No, I mean, it's a standard under team, so there's not much you can say about it just now, but I'm curious how they will do it in the end season. Okay. In that case, let's look at my pre-selected team, none other than... Uh, wait, where the hell... Oh, I wow, I didn't realize that. Um, so, this halfling team is a team value 800. That's pretty high for halflings. That is really high. They have two rerolls, which... You know, seems like a reasonable number. They have an Apo, which I'm not sure I agree with. They also have one cheerleader and one coach assistant. Uh, they do have the Nuffles Altar, so they probably aim for 800, I would imagine. There's one thing I do also notice. That, and uh, uh, they have a ton of halflings. I don't know if you've seen it, but like all these halflings are gingers or like redheads. Uh, let's see. Red Maple Mayhem, Ginger Snapneck, Rogue the Ripper, uh, Remy Rage Stash, Angry Auburn, Frank the Firebush, Burnin Brett. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> like I said, like it's a really funny team. The only guy which is not a redhead is called Relay the Ginger Ally. <laughs> Oh, this is great. <laughs> this is ginger. And they have a nice red and stripes uniform. This is like it's a good team. This is like this is this is perfect. I love this. And uh yeah, so this team value the, the TV on this team is a, definitely on the high side. I would like this team better if it was, say, a hundred TV less. I think it can it can still like reliably induce deeper at this point. In theory, rate, right? they can they can cut the apothecary. Like you don't really need it as a halfling team. Like um, you need three fifty to reliably get deep root and the master chef, right? Yeah. Okay. So you can just you can just cut the apothecary. Then you'd be at two fifty. Then. Yeah. Uh, which hmm. I mean, it's a little bit high, but here's the thing. There are 14 halflings on this team. I guarantee you in a few games there will be fewer than that. So yeah, it's going like, to naturally trim its own TV. And is, then in a few I'm games saying, like, it will be, it will get more inducements. I would, half, however... Halflings aren't mm -hmm. something you say for the potticaries. The dream and mm -hmm. I'm not going to die you normally. So. Yeah, like, if you have an amazing tree man, then you might want to get an apo. But uh, I don't think it needs an app at this stage in its development, and it definitely doesn't need a cheerleader or coach assistant. Like, on some teams, taking one of each of those is like, sure, whatever. It can give you a situational advantage. Go for it if you want. But on stunty teams, you really, really care about getting that uh, every point of extra inducement money that you can. Especially because of deep fruit, because deep fruit is mm -hmm. worth every penny. Uh, exactly. Still, I I want to see what this team does. Their performance in the first, how this team does rather, their performance in the first week looked solid, and uh, I'm really excited to see where they go. Well then, let's look at the uh, day two schedule and mm -hmm. see who they're up against. Okay, uh, they are playing against the Rock'em and Sock'ems, which naturally is the, the game I want to look at. Uh, that is, of course, a uh, 
That's the that's the uh, Dark Elves, right? Yeah, it's the Dark Elves. The team. Dark Elves coached by Dwakes, and actually for the Dark Elves, this is a really good matchup. Yeah. Um, unlike the Stunty versus Dark Elves match we looked up at in the previous division, this one favors the Dark Elves much more strongly. There's one issue that they have, which they do need to be careful for, and that's the fact that Deep Root is probably going to be on the pitch. Uh, that seems likely. That that seems like a safe call, uh, I think. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I don't think I can say realistically that the Dark Elves are going to lose this, but I want so badly for the Halflings to win this game. <laughs> Oh, well, you know, you can always hope for a miracle. They're bound to win at least one game, right? Right? That's how Stunty works, right? <laughs> okay. The game that I am going to look at this week is... Uh, let me have a good look. I think all of the interesting games, except for two, are played because it's like... The Halflings versus Rock Seconds, then two bye weeks. Then we have Economy of Scale versus Nurse, which is Lizard versus Undead, which mm -hmm. is a very weird matchup. A bad matchup for Undead, to be personally honest, but for the Lizards, it's also like very iffy, because you know that Mighty Blow can be very bad in the beginning for them. Mm -hmm. This is, I think, why I'm going to go with the Crawdal, uh, the Craw Dead Side Echo experience versus Wood United. Okay, so humans versus what else? Who do you think is going to take it? Well, um, looking at the teams, I do believe that the wood elves are going to take this one. Uh, I think I would be have to be inclined to agree with you. I would have to give the advantage to the wood elves. If only because, like, there's just not a whole lot that humans can do against Wood Elves at this TV. Like... They can play the bash game with their block, mm -hmm. which should work, but they don't have any Mighty Blow or something. Yeah, so I mean, like, that's... They have to play a removal game basically based on lock. Like, that's true. Humans can definitely get removals against rookie Wood Elves and get a lot of SPP that way. But at the same time, like, the critical players in the Wood Elves, the War Dancers and the Catchers... Those players are amazing out of the box. They are probably some of the best rookie players in the game. So, unless that's, you... That's, that's the thing with mm. humans. Humans always have to adapt to the strategy of the opponents, but there's this uh, universal difference between mm. a agility and a bash team early on, like an agility team. They all have agility 4 out of the box. They can do their passing plays. They can do their dodges. They just have to be savory with rerolls. Mm -hmm. They don't have any issues bashing, from the beginning, actually, it's really weak because they need to have their mighty blow, they need to have their dirty play, they need to have their core skills. Mm -hmm. Because without the core skills, they just bash as effectively as a agility team. Yeah, that's that's my, sort of my thinking. Uh, the humans need at humans. I think like their sweet spot, I would say, is in the two to four, is in the twelve to four fourteen hundred range. They can go higher than that, but like. They're not a bad start uh, team at low TV, but they need their core skills to be a good uh, low TV team. At TV 1000, they're not that great. It just, you know, your average Joe. Mm -hmm. Joe could work, but Joe has to work hard for it. Okay, and uh, I want to make one final note. Uh, one of the admin games is the Mammals of Unusual Size. I point this out because last week one of the admin games was Mammals of Unusual Size. Uh, in two weeks, they have had both of their admin games. And it's, it's in the first two weeks. Uh, don't go anywhere because it'll get better after this. And sorry on behalf of the everyone involved that this happened. It was random. Uh, but hey, you'll be off to a good start when you actually Enjoy. get to play a game. Enjoy the huge Benjamin start gold mm -hmm. and the team will up of, on up on everybody like hey I would leave gold and I haven't done yep. a thing. You will look great for the for your first few games, no matter how you perform. 
Okay. And on that note, I believe we are just about done for this week. Uh, we'll be back next week, probably around the same time, uh, give or take a day. Um, and uh, hopefully with nose dice then. Uh, but, you know, we'll sort of play that one by ear, I guess. Uh, until then, this is once again being the Fowl crew. I didn't actually say that at the beginning of this video. We're all on Team okay. Fowl. That's that's why we're the Fowl crew. That's, that's um, already very obvious. I mean, I'm focal enough on this goal that people should know who I am. And, uh, yeah, this has been the recap for you. Have a good games. Bye. See ya. <laughs>